Hello, Websy Wongi. I hope everyone's having a good day. Yesterday was very emotional, and this is what I'm going to talk about. Um, there was a, I believe, in Parkland, Florida, which is four hours away, I believe. When I looked it up on Google, um, there was a um, mass school shooting. And um, I'm not sure on the death rate, but I believe there was 17 killed. Some teachers, I think, and then some students, and then some are injured. Um, basically, what I want to talk here is how can we stop school shootings from happening, in my opinion, as a 27-year-old. I feel like taking away people's rights to own a weapon is not always the case, is not always um, the thing to do. Because if you take away a person's guns and their rights to own a gun, you know, what's going to happen when someone comes in your house and is trying to get kill your family or trying to steal things? You know, I feel like we as... American citizens should protect our family and protect our children. But also, too, either way you look at it, um, I feel like that um, there's, there's thousands and millions of ways people can kill someone. And I think if you took away people's rights to own a weapon, um, it could help in some ways and it could not um i just feel like there's thousands of ways like i said there's thousands of ways people can kill people so the best bet i think to stop it is and i've talked to, with my boyfriend about this is somehow fixing the system and either the fbi does a better job on it as not just a background check on the person that wants to own the gun, but literally go through a program or some sort of thing like a lie detector and, um, you know, figure out what is the reason you want to own this weapon and that they will go more deep background checks on these people and go through classes. And if they don't pass it or whatever, then they can't own it. But I don't think technically taking away guns is the best idea. But it, it really breaks my heart that there's so many people out there that, you know, says, you know, we're, we had another gun shooting. We had another gun shooting and we're still saying the same thing. And do pray for the families, yes. And, you know, the people that were affected by this at the school. And it's really crazy because four hours away and, you know, I'm thinking, how does things like this happen? And I watched a video, and I'll put it in the link below, that there were signs. There were signs to this happening. Um, the guy, he was about 18, I think, 19. Um, he owned a rifle, um, a year before he posted pictures about threats and things and nobody out of his friends called the police or anything. And it's just sad how that one got under the rug and nobody said anything. And it's like, you think if you know something's happening to someone that is threatening, um, the neighborhood or anything you think you would do something about it and I'm not putting those people down in any way but I just think <clears throat> I just think the system needs to work better and be fixed where you know because taking away gu guns from people is not not the way to go especially if you're dealing with rednecks you know they want to be able to hunt and, you know, provide for their family in the winter with deer and all that. I just feel like, you know, that it needs to be more restricted on who gets a weapon and goes through, like, a lie detector and really get in-depth background checks. And I think that would solve it, too. 
And a lot of it has to do with people who kill. You know, they, they either have a psychologic problem, a mental issue, things going on in their life that people don't know about. And they need to get help. I think we should help more people. I think in schools, especially schools, they need to have a program to reach out to these kids. And I think that's where we as Americans, we as people and human of this society that we live in in 2018 are failing. We're failing our kids. We're failing our teenagers in schools. And that we just need to have more of an outlet for these kids instead of um, resentment and anger towards schools and hate schools, but learn to love schools. And um, I, I don't want to blame the family or the parents that raised this kid because I don't think it's my place. We don't know what it's like to be them, and I don't think we should judge them. But I think... Um, just the whole school system needs to find a way to reach out to these kids. And, you know, these kids need psychological help, you know, to have a support group in their school, maybe. You know, <clears throat> it's just hard seeing one of these things happen again. And it makes me think when I was a kid, and I think 1994, there was a school shooting in Columbine. Um, Colorado, I think, and people died. And then just in this year, I heard a video, and I'm not a hundred percent sure, but just in this year, 2018, there's been shootings all across America, and it's like something's not working, you know. Your drill systems aren't working at schools, practicing, you know, in case things like this happen. And it's like, I just think people need to find a better solution to this problem instead of just oh it's another mass shooting no we need to be serious we need to take this in consideration and not just make it government control world and communists but we need to work with our communities maybe you know in towns they need to have community places people can go to <clears throat> that's why I think of a community center. I know a lot of towns have them, but I don't think they're really helping their community out. They're just, oh, do this, or just put people in psych psychiatric wards and all this crap. I just think people really need to get help these days if they have that issue, and not just give them the pills for the answer. Give them the help they need to work through it. So that's my take on this um, event that has happened and I just I just hope things can change have a good day